Arts of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events, the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials and ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes with Plein Air and Fine Art Connoisseur Magazines. And as a painter, as an artist, the way to push yourself is to grow through experimentation. That's why I love the video I'm going to show you today, Fun with Mixed Media. This is Karen Knutson. Hi, I'm Karen Knudsen. I'm from Minnesota. You'll notice that from my accent, or as we say, in, for my granddaughter. I taught her how to say Minnesota. Anyway, um, I'm very excited to be able to show you some exciting textures that will add that wow factor to your paintings. Um, some of the things we'll be adding are charcoal powder, uh, many other different things that are going to break the bank when you learn how cool they are. Um, some of the things we do with the charcoal powder, uh, if I show you, this is how they start out, believe it or not. We'll be pouring a big bucket of water on the surface, and so, um, and this just, the charcoal powder just disperses. And after that, I turn them into their landscapes. These are some, some landscapes that I love doing that look like quilted, quilted paintings, I guess. Here is a um, birch tree painting landscape. My demo will be showing how to do birds. A crow is my subject. And so here's a, here is a cardinal. And then I've done florals in this technique too. So now that we know what we will be doing, let's go through some of the supplies that we will be using. So the supplies that we'll be using today are um, watercolors. Your watercolor palette with your usual pa colors in there. Um, I have Da Vinci Red Rose Deep, but you can use Windsor, um, Windsor Newton Permanent Rose, Scarlet Lake. I have Opera Pink, that's a Holbein color. I have two wells that are filled with areolin um, or aurelium, however you want to pronounce it. Everybody pronounces it differently. Um, there's cadmium yellow, um, that one I don't use very much. Quinacridone gold is a color I use. Um, Windsor green is one that you probably are surprised at, but I, I mix that with um, alizarin crimson to make a black. So Windsor green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, I don't use this very much, um, manganese blue, uh, neutral tint, oh, Antwerp blue, um, and then I have raw sienna, uh, quinacridone, burnt sienna, and or you can you you can use a quinacridone burnt orange, or you can use burnt sienna, either one, and uh, permanent magenta. Windsor Red I hardly use anymore, but one that I will use, like I said earlier, with, with mixing my black is the alizarin crimson. So that's my watercolors. Then your brushes, I use um, a one inch flat. And again, I'm not picky about brands. I actually prefer the synthetic, which is good news to you because they don't cost very much uh, compared to the others. I use a half inch flat. 
And the reason I use these is because I can turn them on the corner on the side and they actually, uh, you know, I don't have to keep running over and getting another brush. Um, and then the number six round. And that's pretty much my brushes. I just got a couple extras here in case they misbehave. I've got an extra one. You'll need a ruler, um, probably pencils, um, your water containers, a sponge for wipe, wiping off your brushes. I use um, a, a, a spray bottle for putting water in. I like uh, this one particularly because it has a push button top. The ones that are like the gun type um, come out too forceful, so the push button top is important. You'll need your Kleenex. You'll need scissors. Um, some of the tips we'll be using later are charcoal uh, pencil, uh, elegant writer pen, um, metallic pens, um, and then here's the number one thing that is important is uh, when we start our painting, uh, charcoal powder. And you'll see graphite powder too, but charcoal powder is the one that you want. And I put them in spice containers so that they are easier to, uh, to sprinkle out. You'll need matte medium, and any brand is good. I, I actually like Liquitex just because it pours out of the bottle. Usually I like golden products, but this Liquitex works really well. If you are the type that don't like the, uh, a shadow effect happening, then it's really good to go with Yes Paste. And so Yes Paste does not uh, have an echo um, where you'll have a little film. We'll need a, a big bucket for throwing the water on the charcoal surface. When we get to adding the, the metal, we will need double stick tape. And I use an ATG gun for that. It, the double stick tape that is on the scotch tape type thing does not work. It has to be really thin. And um, then we'll be using gold foil paper. And, uh, and then there's a PBO glass paint that is a great outliner. Then some of the tricks, um, new tools are Caran d'Ache crayons. Then they are wonderful. Um, I like to use a compass for getting round shapes. So we've got that. Uh, Molotow markers are wonderful for covering up mistakes. So they are acrylic, and so they come in many different colors. We'll also be having tips on how to use Tombow markers, which are water-soluble markers, and how you can treat them like paint. And so you can get some unusual colors with those. And I think that, oh, we need an, uh, an icky brush, I call it, um, for applying the, uh, the water to start with when we do the charcoal powder. And that's it. That's the list of all of our materials. So let's move on and do the charcoal pour. So now we're gonna do the charcoal pour. This is a fun technique that I learned from reading the book Discovering the Inner Eye by Virginia Cobb. So what you do is you have this I call it an icky brush, but you want it to be scratchy uh, so that it will make marks. Um, and you'll see in a minute. And then I'm, I'm going to dipping this in water, and I am coming across basically in a cruciform fashion. And if you can't, hopefully you can see um, the the scratch marks that you get by doing this. This is going to create the white, this is saving your whites by doing this. So then I like to dip, I like to uh, pour it off and get some drips. All of these later will be maybe indications of branches uh, if you're doing a bird like I'm demonstrating. So now I've got the, uh, the water on there. Here is the charcoal uh, pour powder. And make sure that it's charcoal powder and not graphite powder. And I poured this into a little spice container. And I will gently just sprinkle this on. Don't get too much. 
This goes a long way. And I usually don't worry about the, the edges of the paper. And that's about right. So now I'm going to put this in the bottom of this container. And we are going to pour a big bucket of water with force. No being timid. You have to do it with force. So here we go. And this is what you get. So isn't that fun? I love this. Now we'll let this dry. And uh, I usually uh, don't blow dry it. I, I let it air dry. And, uh, and then after that is dry, we'll be spraying workable fixative on top. So while that is drying, I want to show you a couple examples of when you don't do the spray, the charcoal powder correctly. Um, this is one that, that I use the brush too much, and so you see I've got too many streaks here. This is what I want to have happen, is, and that's from that icky brush to be able to have the finger type look there. And so um, that would be why I wouldn't use this one for the, for the bird. This one, I didn't use enough force, and so you can see how cloudy it is. That is, um, that's when you're just timid about, about putting that water down. You have to do it with force. Really give it a little punch. And so that's, then, and you can see the difference right here between these. This is a good one, and this is one that's, that's cloudy. And that's because I didn't use enough force. So with this one, this is the, the workable, uh, Krylon workable fixative. I think there's probably other brands. You can use any one you want. Um, I, I spray it outside. We're in a studio setting right now, so I'm not going to show you that right now, but I will go through the motions so you'll really be able to know how to do this. So the workable fixative, what I do is I spray, I start outside on the lawn, and then I spray in a vertical motion at about six inches away from the paper. And I make sure that I go beyond the paper. And then I come side horizontally, the same way, about six inches away from the paper. And, um, and then when you get done, you sh really should let this aerate outside for a while. Then go wash your hands with soap and water. Um, this is pretty strong stuff. So now we get to add our drawing to the charcoal powder pour. It should be completely dry. You've sprayed it with your workable fixative, and now we're ready to go. I, I usually will do my drawing on uh, tracing paper. And here is my reference that, um, that I had. I actually, the reference that I had was facing the other way, but I knew that in this particular um, charcoal powder pour, I want to position the head in a light area. So I, so I had that all ready to go there. So what I do is I put this and I actually trace my bird. Why not make it easy, right? And then I position the tracing paper on the, the charcoal pour so that it can be, so that your head is in a light area. And the reason you do that is because the head is dark and I want to have it, you know, I want to have that spray out from that. So you keep positioning it. You can do it vertically, horizontally, whatever works. So you position this in, and I tape two, I put two tapes at the top of it. I slide my Sorrel um, paper, my graphite paper underneath. The Sorel graphite paper is my favorite because it, it erases easily. So now that this is in, taped in place, I slide this underneath and I just trace my bird. And for the sake of speed, I have it already traced. <laughs> so here we are. Now my bird is traced. If you have areas like this that you can't see very well, you have an option of going to your charcoal powder, or your, not charcoal powder, charcoal white pencil, 
and and if that will show up uh, over the top of the of the dark areas wherever it's dark that's what I use so that I can see it and that is that's pretty much how far we get to our drawing now that we have the crow sketched on our surface the next step is to stage our crow uh, this is something that I do. I, I love putting a circle behind. You can add, like, a, it would be fun if it was with a birdhouse behind it, a square, uh, whatever, you, whatever you want. This is just a fun thing. You can make your, um, your circle go outside of the, of the paper. That's fun. Just to keep moving it around and picturing where you're going to be painting inside and outside of that circle. So once I get where I like it, I will put there. And now my circle is on the paper. And I have learned the hard way, put a little circle, tiny circle, where you poke this in, just in case you have to go back to that later on. So that's our first step of staging. Now we have to figure out how are we going to have a good light pathway leading you through to the leading you through the painting. So I'm going to take a paper here and draw real quickly uh, just to give you a 101 um, how to how to have good design in your paintings. So I promise it won't take long. People don't like to do value sketches, but here's my rules. You start at the left edge. And, uh, and you are, your object is to head up to the top of the paper. So I can go like this um, and head up to the top. And now I start over on this side. Now because I've got this circle thing, I'm just going to say, okay, I've got that circle going here. And now uh, my object is to get over to this side of the paper. So now I'm starting on this left side, right side, and I'll come here, and my object is to get down to the bottom. I can make this interesting for the viewer by putting a little couple of jogs in it, if I want, and then start at the bottom and go up to the original place that you started. Now, if I were to color in my corners now, I would have a light pathway. Bef but before we do that, let's just draw the, where the crow is. This does not have to be fine art. It does not matter, really doesn't. So we've got our crow that is in here in this area. And what I'm doing right now, this scratchiness, is something I'm going to share with you later on called... Um, wire drawing. It's pretty fun. So we'll do our legs coming down here. And basically I just want to have the position of, of the crow. So if I have my circle coming here, got my crow here in the light area, and then I've got my whites that are, that are staging behind. So my crow is going to be dark. And my corners are going to be dark. My students don't like to do value sketches, and I always tell them, you know what? It takes two minutes. So it's not hard to figure this out so that you can, you can get rid of your mistakes here instead of when you get into the painting. And this is all there is to it. So doesn't the crow look nice with that light pathway showcasing him? So in this case, and I always do this with pencil, so I would erase out wherever there, where I can't, if, I, if it shows where the dark and the dark is against the dark, and I really can't see that edge, this would be my clue that maybe another pathway of light there would show that edge a little bit better. So now I've got two legs that are coming out. And in here where the tail is, maybe that would be light coming out here. So I make those changes after, after I've done that first cruciform. 
and um, it's really pretty easy to be able to have a nice little direction to go. So here's one that, that I did at home so you can kind of see. Just basically this all directs your eye through the painting. And next we'll be adding color. After getting our design sketch done, I have taken the liberty to put the drawing on the paper. Um, maybe you have to move things around just a touch from your design sketch that we have here according to what happened, you know, on with their charcoal pour, but pretty much it's, it's pretty close. So let's get started. Add some color. So I like to use um, semi-transparent or transparent colors. I stay away from opaque at this time. So I'm going to start with, um, with some blues and cobalt blue and I'll mix a little bit of um, ultramarine, just a touch of ultramarine in that. And I'm going to paint on the outside of this circle right here. Now as you are working on this surface that has the charcoal pour on it, you are going to notice that the paint doesn't, doesn't spread quite like it does on a normal watercolor paper. So you have to pull it a little bit, kind of like when we're working with acrylics. And, um, and after you get the first coat on, then you're back in business and you'll be just like normal watercolor. But you'll notice that you'll have to pull it a little bit. So the reason I went on the outside of the circle here is because I want to have this white. I want to save that white. So now we'll have the blue on the other side of that. I'm just going to be able to I'll follow my design sketch here. And you'll start seeing that light pathway that I talked about. Now, I, I don't want to have just blue, so change it, add in a little bit of yellow into that, a little bit of your areola and yellow. Remember I said when I was um, telling you about my supplies that I have two different areolans, and that's because I double load, which I don't clean my brush before and I get some really interesting colors there. So I've got some blues and some greens here. Um, I'm not going to go around the feet. Doesn't matter. It's going to be darker later on so you don't have to sweat that. Now I'll put, may change this to maybe a little bit more manganese blue as I go over here. I get a different shade of the blue. And I stop when I come to that light pathway. And like I said, you have to pull it a little bit more when you're working on this uh, surface that has been sprayed with the workable fixative. So now we'll go on the other side here. I'll start with my manganese because there's a rule called, you know, bookend rule where you want to have the same color on both sides of the pathway and then you can change it after that. So now I'll go back to my other blues and go around here so and then no, don't worry about the tail, we'll talk about that in a minute because we will be painting our crow too, underpainting. So what I'm looking for at this point is I want all of my corners to be just slightly different. I want um, just, I'm going to be staying with the blues. The reason I start with um, primary color pretty much is because if I choose to later on, I can change that blue to a green or I could change that blue to a purple, a violet because that's, the, that's part of that combination. So blue and yellow makes green. And so, and we'll just add this corner up here, a little bit more green. You see it spotting like that? You just, just stroke it and that'll take care of that. Sometimes when you spray too much of the workable fixative, it does that. But after the first coat, it's, it's good. Let's get a little bit more yellow in that, just to get some variance. And now I'm going to paint um, the bird. And in this case, I'm working with a crow. 
And so the, the lightest part of black is a blue. So I will do the a blue. I'll do ultramarine blue for my black, for my lightest. But if I were working with, uh, with a cardinal, my lightest part of that would be a pink or an orange. So if you see with this one, I've got, so you, obviously you wouldn't put blue as the first coat of this. So you would do either an orange or a pink. Or you could even do yellow. But you see how you, sta you start with primary colors. I'm going to go around the eye and leave that. It's going to look funny for a while. But we'll go around the eye. And I'm going to leave the beak out too. Uh, crow's beaks usually are a blackish blue, but um, I mine, <laughs> because these are imaginary birds, Mine are, I might have an orange beak, I don't know. It might be red, who knows. And so then we'll just have this go down into here. We'll be able to see those feet better later. And this blends right down into there. So far, it'll show later. So on this part, I've got where... Um, I want to show you about uh, doing inside outside. So if I go on the outside of this circle here, now I'm going to go on the inside of the circle. So if I wet the paper first with my clear water, did you notice I have two different waters? One is always with just clean water and that way I, I don't have to get up and, uh, and go get new water. So I'm I guess I'm basically lazy. <laughs> but if I put the, so now I've got this water, I wet this up to about right here, and then we'll put the blue down on this edge, so I'm going on the inside of the circle. And because that is wet, I'm able to just pull this out just a little bit and let that just fade into the white. It's a neat illusionary effect. So I've got outside, inside. And so here, um, I have a choice I can, I can do on the inside again. Um, I think I will, so I'll save this light pathway here. So we'll go on the inside. Let's get that wet at first. When I want it to fade out, I always wet the surface first. Out at least an inch beyond where you think it's going to bleed. So I'll come with the blue here, and then we'll fade, you're able to fade it out because it was wet. Let's get a little bit of change in that. Okay, so now you can absolutely see your light pathway, which is I'm passionate about. I think it's really important that you have um, you know, a clear direction for the viewer to look through your painting and guide, it, guide the viewer through your painting. Um, we will be seeing the, the end of the tail later on with more layers, but you start out with mainly primary colors. Like I said, we can change them to different colors later on. Our next thing is to add collage. You want to make sure that this is dry. So we can take, you can dry it with a blow dryer if you want to or whatever, but it has to be dry for the next step. And we'll be adding collage next. Hey, would you like to win a beautiful painting worth almost $3,000? We've got a beautiful Joe McGurl plein air study that he's done of the sunset in Maine. It's gorgeous. If you want to have an opportunity to win it, go to Painting Giveaway. Dot com. Just put in your email. That's all you've got to do, and you only need to enter once. We'll be giving away the prize at the end of May. Go to paintinggiveaway.com. Artist and instructor Karen Knutson has one goal for her live workshops, and her students love it. In fact, they love it so much, her workshops sell out consistently. It's simple, but powerful, to have fun. 
Karen knows firsthand that painting can unlock a lifetime of exploration and joy. And she wants her students to be able to have as much fun as she knows they could be having painting. Welcome to Fun with Mixed Media with Karen Knudsen. In this video workshop, Karen shows you how to splash, pour, and paint your way to paintings you'll be proud to show your family, all while having a great time. Karen shows you great techniques for getting started fast. No time for overthinking and worrying. Why not make it easy, right? Discover a way to create realistic drawings, even if you had no drawing experience. Imagine how much less anxiety you'll have when you can have realistic images in your work. Learn how to direct the viewer's eye to your focal point, even if you are new to design. Your paintings will be stronger immediately. Discover mixed media techniques and repeatable steps that will have you creating paintings you're proud of in no time. And you'll be working in a way that is so fun, you'll finish one painting and immediately want to start the next. Order yours today and discover what students of Karen's sold out workshops already know that painting mixed media is truly the most fun an artist can have. Fun with Mixed Media with Karen Knudsen is available on DVD or digitally to view on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Order your copy today. Well, that was Fun with Mixed Media and Karen Knudsen and you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. So much fun, in fact, we're gonna show you another segment from the video now. All right, now we've got our painting dried. You have to let it dry probably 30 to 40 minutes to make sure that you won't be smearing this when you put on your collage. So now we get to add a lot of fun collage. Um, I wanna start with the wings and um, the rule that I have is trying to bring in maybe a few opposite colors where our main color is blue. So we're going to probably go with some yellows and oranges. And um, what I, I like to use um, matte medium for uh, my glue. And I use Liquitex. You can use Golden, whatever brand you like. Matte medium makes it so that it's not so glossy. Uh, also another glue is Yes Glue, and that works really well too if you are the type of person that doesn't like to have a little um, echo around it. So I'll show you that as we go. So the way that you get your glue ready is you um, pour it about a tablespoon, two tablespoons into a little container, and then um, spray just a couple squirts of water in here and then I'm using an old brush. Uh, these, this will ruin a good brush so you want to make sure that you I use a, an acrylic brush, a half inch brush is a good one. And you want this to be the consistency of like buttermilk or I like to say Hershey syrup. That's I mean if you're gonna go for it let's go for something that tastes good. So anyway I'm gonna put this uh, glue down on my on the wing first and then um, I will tear my, my, this is actually wrapping paper. <laughs> so anything goes with this. I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to this. Uh, no bit about it, I am really a hoarder. So you put that down and now I'm gonna glue on top of it. By gluing on top of it, that seals it so that uh, it shouldn't change colors through the years. Uh, I learned collage from Gerald Brommer, who is just a really cool guy, so um, that got me off and running. I absolutely love collage. So another thing that we want to do is different textures, uh, so getting something in the family of the color that is in the background, and this is actually a gift bag that I bought. I bought something at a store, and um, when I really like the gift bag, I actually tease, I ask, I, I ask them um, for an extra bag. <laughs> so I pretend like I'm buying a gift for a friend. I guess I'm, I'm my own friend. So um, we, start, we start putting these collage papers on and I'm trying to vary the sizes. I also want to overlap them a little bit. So this overlaps that 
you really don't see the um, you don't you don't see that that anything right now because this isn't see-through but a lot of times I will use napkins and those are see-through so you can really um, you can get the three layers then so um, I'm gonna add this um, later on so I'll get a little bit of this in here too and so this is going to be for I'm going to do an L shape so this is um, cover cardstock paper that you can get at any craft store and that adds another nice texture so you keep layering on the wing until you uh, until you have excitement um, here's another cardstock paper that actually looks like a basketball and I'll do this one in a long thin one just for a different shape so I'm continually trying to change up the shapes I'm also trying to get a difference in values on on these so I've got my blues I've got my opposite oranges and browns um, here's a yellow that's maybe a little bit lighter than what the other ones are and it's got polka dots on it so that's a fun one too um, I'll put this one down here so make sure that you seal them by coating over the top of them just by going like this doesn't work and then if it is something from a magazine you have to squeeze out the extra glue from underneath or else they will start wrinkling after I do a little bit, I take a Kleenex and I get the excess glue up that way. So now I look at this and I say, all right, that's, they've got some extra texture. I really like the way this one shows. And um, so, but really it doesn't have that extra kick that I'm looking for. So me who doesn't throw away anything, um, I've got my palette from when I'm when I do acrylic paintings and so watch what happens if I just put just a tiny bit of this color in here this red color get a little bit brighter one and you'll see all of a sudden that I think that it just is the wow factor that helps okay so me I like red in everything so the, I put the put little bits of that wow factor um, whatever a bright orange would have worked too because that's an opposite to the blue um, but then this is a trick that most people don't when they look at my paintings they don't see this when they do them but I'm gonna give you all my secrets so here is a um, black and white um, paper so you can use checks um, whatever but this is what you put at the very bottom of the wing so that when I get to this being black uh, the wing edge will show so I put this at the bottom of the wing and uh, you can imagine that if this were black right next to it how that's a really nice contrast that will be happening so I don't want to outline the whole wing with, with these, but I do want a little bit of that, of that black and white. And if you use black and white uh, napkins, it really doesn't work because napkins you can see through. So if you use napkins, you have to put a white paper underneath of them so that they become opaque. And so that's another tip for that, just a little tip for you. Um, Another thing that I love is tissue paper. So tissue paper, um, you'll see when I overlap this, that I all of a sudden not only have the blue, but as I overlap it over the top of this gold, I've got a light green color too. So anytime I want to unify something, I'll put a little bit of the tissue paper on top, and that, that blue really works well. When we get to the tail section, these are a special tip that I have for you. Do you know these postcards that, that you get in your, um, in your magazines and you're just, and most people just grab them and they throw them away right away. I absolutely love these 
because I know that if I cut this into stripes, I've all of a sudden got some exciting texture that can work really well for the tail feathers, for instance. Sometimes I leave this little writing part right on there. And so I'll put for the tail. Yeah. And isn't that cool? So you've got, um, I do different widths of these. I can have one skinnier. But I actually will go to the store and, and shake the uh, magazines and try to get them to fall out so that I, <laughs> I can take them. So that is um, another tip that you will, I think, enjoy adding. I love stripes like this. I think they really add to, um, add to a design. So lots of times in the background, if I need just a little bit more zip, I will, I will add uh, some of these. So, um, so that's another tip about texture adding with, that doesn't cost you anything. Um, let's see, now I want to do an L shape that comes behind the bird because when this is black, I, I have a last thing that I always do where I add blacks to a painting. And so, with that L shape, I'm going to really bring in a lot of color so that it just really sings. So I'm cutting some more cardstock. This one is an interesting one that actually is um, puckered. So we'll see what that does. So if I have my L shape, let's see. I don't want the L shape to be at the end of his head right here. So a good place to bring it would be where I want to have this show. So maybe about right here would be good. I'll draw my line here. And then you can come down. It can be clear to the feet. Lots of times I will have it in the feet area or in front of the feet. So this is my L. Okay, so again, we put down the glue at, the, at where I'm going to be putting this L shape, and I want this yellow on the edge of it because I know that, that there's nothing better than yellow and blue. So I will put those. This is the, what I'm doing right now is um, the glue is going on both sides of this. If I were to paint on top of this right in this area here, that's the, that's the times when some of my students don't like it because they, the paint will repel it a little bit. That's when you maybe would want to use Yes Glue instead if you're one of those. I actually love all the textures that happen, so it doesn't bother me in the least. But I hear that from students, so. Um, now we will have our, um, this is a, a busy, cardstock that possibly I can continue painting on um, out from that. So I will put this one at the bottom edge. And anytime I've got something this long, I break it. I like to be able to um, do some negative painting on that later. And so I don't want it to be just really long and, and boring. So that I've just got little breaks between, and yet they continue off. So put that on top. And then I've got a wider one for, so I've got different widths. You want to vary things. That's really a good compositional tip for you is always um, repetition and variation. You'll hear me say those, th those, those words a lot. And so I'm going to get the angle of the bird next. And I'm going to put this right next to this yellow. And I've got my 
something that would be fun to be able to paint out from. I can make some circles out from that later. And I'm going to squeeze the glue out from each edge so that they don't pucker. And just do a Kleenex on top to dab the extra glue off. So another tip that I learned from John Salmon, and actually is, is my mentor, um, I learned so much from him about design. So is you have um, words in a magazine, and if you cut the top and the bottom off of those words, you don't, you can't read what it says. So I love that tip, and I heard that from John. And so this, if you see, when I put this down by, um, in between that yellow, I can't read what it says, but it has like a repetitive thing, almost a checkerboard type look to it. And that brings that red, just that little bounce, up to the top of the page, which is nice. So we'll get that all done. Okay. And then I would repeat that red down at the base here, too, and the yellow. So uh, I think that is about it for my demonstration of my collage. But here's one that is completed. And um, I guess the only thing that I didn't share on that first one was sometimes it's fun to put maps in there or music. And so that's another idea for you. If you can go on um, Google Maps, you can actually print them off. And maps um, really look kind of cool in there for a, uh, red and white in your collage also. So happy collaging. Okay, we've got our collage on our bird, and now it's time to paint the bird the dark color. Uh, one thing I did forget to tell you in the collage section is when you get done with your brush, be sure to wipe that out with soapy water, or you will have ruined a brush. But um, So that, that's just my tip about that. Uh, I, I, I want to have my crow to be black, but I want to build up to that black in many layers. So I'm going to start with um, the ultramarine blue, and I will, yeah, pretty much ultramarine blue. I'll start with that. And this is pretty simple. Just going to be going still around that eye. And you'll see as we go that all of these markings within the bird when, will be gone, you know, from our initial charcoal pour. With every layer that you get darker, you know, it, they will disappear. So here's my use of, you know, I think it's just because I'm just lazy. Uh, I, I just use a, a one inch flat brush pretty much through most of my painting. It, it um, keeps me from getting too detailed too fast, so uh, that's a good thing. Here is the neat thing when I told you about adding the black and white. You can already see it with even this blue color, how that it, I'm starting to see a, a contrast between the wing and the bird. So we will get down to his cute little legs. I usually will... Um, now I'll get to the feet and I will change brushes. Um, when, I, when I get to the feet, I love it when the toes are exaggerated. So I really make them a little bit longer. Their toenails coming out and, and um, I, I love a little nubby. <laughs> I like them. They look like he's, it looks like he's wearing skis or something. It's kind of fun for me. So, let's see, and there's one toe that's hidden back there and one toe that's hidden back there. So now we let this dry and we'll be back after it's dry. So I let this dry and now I am going to do another layer. I'm going to mix French ultramarine blue with uh, burnt sienna or if you have Quinn burnt orange, either one of those work. 
and you get a really dark um, charcoal gray color by mixing those two together. And so we'll start at the head here and go over the top of this blue again around the eye I'll save just a touch of that blue up next to the eye I know it looks funny right now but it'll come together I hope as we go so I'm watching this, uh, my mixture is uh, kind of thick. I double load, I go from French ultramarine blue to the burnt orange without cleaning my, without adding water. Um, if, you, if it's too thick, you just add just a touch of water is all. But you go between those two colors until you get the shade that you want. And that makes a thick, a thick color. See, this is just a tiny bit too thick. I want it to spread, but I, I really don't want to see through it. I want it to be pretty opaque. So I'll go down about right here. Now, as this is losing its shine, I'm going to wipe off the highlights. So the top of his head would have a highlight. So if I wipe this off, I should see a little bit of that blue undertone. And then this will come forward. You'll start to see like a ridge there just by having the difference in value there. So then around the eyes of a crow, they have, they're almost like little laugh wrinkles. So I will have a few of these that I wipe out. To wipe out your, you have a thirsty brush, you, you dip it in the water, you um, squeeze it between your fingers, and it is a, that's a thirsty brush. So that means that it is, it's, it's wet, but it, most of the moisture is out of it so that it's able to lift out um, some of the, the colors that you want to have lighter. So also I want to have the roundness of his belly there. So I'm going to get a little bit lighter right here. And if I had done this whole thing, and then it would have probably been too dry to be able to get really good lifting there. So that's why you want to watch the timing, and when it loses its shine, that's the timing that you want to be able to get some lighter colors to have a roundness. Now we'll go back. We've got my highlights done, and I can go back and do the rest of the belly. And so now you're seeing a really nice contrast between the wing and, uh, and the belly of the bird. I love painting crows. I don't know what it is about crows. They are um, very smart. I've heard stories that they can even know when the, when the light changes, you know, the light, the red and the green light, and they, after a few of them didn't make it, they figured it out. <laughs> All right, so again, I need to let this dry. That was Karen Knudsen and Fun with Mixed Media. Remember, you got to have fun, you got to push the limits to grow as an artist. You can learn more about that video at lilyartvideo.com. I'm Eric Rhodes. Thanks for watching. Artist and instructor Karen Knudsen has one goal for her live workshops, and her students love it. In fact, they love it so much, her workshops sell out consistently. It's simple, but powerful to have fun. Karen knows firsthand that painting can unlock a lifetime of exploration and joy. And she wants her students to be able to have as much fun as she knows they could be having painting. Welcome to Fun with Mixed Media with Karen Knudsen. In this video workshop, Karen shows you how to splash, pour, and paint your way to paintings you'll be proud to show your family, all while having a great time. Karen shows you great techniques for getting started fast. 
no time for overthinking and worrying. Why not make it easy, right? Discover a way to create realistic drawings, even if you had no drawing experience. Imagine how much less anxiety you'll have when you can have realistic images in your work. Learn how to direct the viewer's eye to your focal point, even if you are new to design. Your paintings will be stronger immediately. Discover mixed media techniques and repeatable steps that will have you creating paintings you're proud of in no time. And you'll be working in a way that is so fun, you'll finish one painting and immediately want to start the next. Order yours today and discover what students of Karen's sold out workshops already know that painting mixed media is truly the most fun an artist can have. Fun with Mixed Media with Karen Knudsen is available on DVD or digitally to view on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Order your copy today.